Before we flip it around, just wanted to give you an update on how well our running bushing and our steady rest, our mount, everything's working. There's been absolutely zero problem. There's been no heat buildup in this right there because I don't have this top jaw bound down on it. And you can see after all that spinning, running 600 RPM, we don't have any galling marks on there. That chrome rod works really good for this. Just keep it, I keep this uh, oil can right there and just been keeping way lube on there as we run. So it's working out fantastic. Working real good. This side is done, polished, and we are going to flip it around and go ahead and get this side finished out now. Time for the swap around. We'll go ahead and get everything loosened up. And pull the shaft out, flip it around. And start machining this in. Once I get it out, I'm going to take a measurement. I will be using my tape measure because you can get it very close within the tape. But we'll use our tape measure. I'll get this in face according to what I'm measuring there. And then we'll start our machine side here. This one, I'm just gonna loosen the one. And once we go back in there, that should allow us to be centered up very close. Those bolts actually have that split bushing kind of stuck in there. There it goes. All right. set it here because I want to take a measurement on it. All right, got a good quality tape measure here. It's not beat up and broken and damaged. We'll use this to get our measurement, our end measurement here. And so we want 90 and a quarter total. And I am at 90 and 3 eighths. And I can tell by looking at it very close, I'm about the thickness of one line shy of being 90 and 3 eighths. So I know that if I take, say, 110, 115 thousandths off the face of that, that's going to put us right at 90 and a quarter. And that's going to be uh, sufficient for what we're doing. Keep in mind, that length was given to us in fraction, and there was no tolerance on that. But usually whenever you got a fraction, you, know, you don't have to be within five thousandths of an inch. And, and as long as you got a good tape measure, you can get that within ten thousandths of your length there. I'm not sliding it on the bottom surface of the shaft. I'm sliding it right on the, the cut end of it, holding it up at a bit of an angle. And now I, I can tell I'm hitting the jaw. There we go. All right. It's about where we want it so we can do our facing. We'll go ahead and you can see our bolts biting into our split bushing, and that's why I, uh, I make these split bushings. You can use brass tipped bolts or put a shim in there or something, but this is just a real effective way. And if you got a lot of these things to do, different sizes, you just have, you just make up different sizes of these split bushings and then you already got them ready to go when you need them. that in there. I'm going to go ahead and snug the chuck down just to get it centered up. Go ahead and slide our running bushing on here. Just like that. Okay. All right, we're ready to do some indicating now. All right, well, first thing we got to do is go ahead and snug our bolt up here on this side. Go 
ahead and zero out our indicator. And, uh, oh, I need to uh, tighten the chuck. I didn't do that. Make sure the chuck is tight first. I just had it just lightly snugged up. So, all right. So there's our highs, and we may need to, uh, yeah, that's still the high. May have to crack those lock nuts loose to get this where we want it. One thousandths. Let's see if we can get a little more of that out there. So half a thousandths run out. I think we're doing pretty good right about there. So just checking the TIR of the uh, chuck in right there. And it appears to be right at the half a thousandths that it normally is. Always does a good job. So we've got this running nice and true. We've got this within a half a thousandths. And that's ready to go too. So I'm gonna make a couple face cuts here. Taking a 55 thousandths cut there, and I'll do another 55 thousand, that'd be 110. It should put us right on our length that we want. sliding through just like it should and we want our uh, our machine to end here is a total of six inches so I'm going to just come out seven inches here making sure we don't pull the bushing out of the steady there so there's about seven inches right at, right there we'll go ahead and um, I'm gonna go ahead and snug everything back up and I'll re-indicate this back end here Up here. So I just want to double check, and make sure that we've got our chuck tight, as I said before. And I'll show you, or I'm going to do what I showed you already: indicate the back end and make sure we're running true here. And I'll double check and make sure we're running good here too. Getting our six inch shoulder length set there. Putting a little red line, indicator set. I'll come up and just bump it. Just a visual indication of where our shoulder is going to stop at there. So our uh, total distance is six inches. This is going to be the 25 millimeter journal here. And on this end, we're going to have a journal that's two. I'm sorry, let's see. Yeah, 2.225 inches back, about like that there. That's gonna be uh, seven eighths. So uh, more standard turning and getting down to size like I've already shown. We're gonna have a snap ring groove machine in here and a keyway milled in there as well. And I'll show you how I offset uh, that precision shoulder length on this end here.
We've got our 25 mil journal roughed in. We've got about 30 thousandths to come off that. So we're gonna go ahead and machine our 7 8 journal. So I'm gonna show you how I offset this using a dial indicator. Um, digital readout, this is, you know, no brainer. I have a digital readout for the machine. I haven't installed it yet. So I'm just gonna come up with the tool here and just very lightly come up and just touch the end of the shaft. All right. And then I'm gonna bring my indicator this indicator right here runs square and parallel to the uh, ways of the machine right there. It's got magnets, so you can stick it on there. It's got like a fence so that it keeps the indicator parallel with the way. So I'm going to come up and just set a zero. And I'll back the tool out so I don't drag it on the face. All right. Now, once we come back to that zero right here, let me get you down here closer. So we want two inches, 225 thousandths. I'm gonna go two inches, 220, give me five thousandths to clean up. So you wanna start your indicator right on the, as soon as it comes up and you can zero it out so that you make sure you get a full one inch range. So just count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So that's exactly one inch right there. Bring this back and reset it. I'm gonna zero it out with the bezel. Do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so that's two inches. Reset it again. One, two, twenty. Two inches, two hundred and twenty thousandths. That's our shoulder length. That gives me five thousandths to clean up and we are right where we need to be. Go ahead and reset it to a zero. Oh, I moved it there. So that'll be our stop location. We'll go ahead and make our witness mark on here like I showed you before. I've got the indicator set to zero and we'll just touch it, create a little witness mark. Making our finished passes here. Everything's still turning nice and straight. Again, using the oil just to kind of help the surface finish here. Does a little better job than the cool mist. Come in an extra five thou on the shoulder. Back face it. That should put us at our two inch 225 shoulder length there. Looks like we got eight tenths oversize to finish. Eight tenths. All right, that finished out good. Our little bit of filing and emery will clean that up real nice. It's got a really good finish there. So now we just got to finish this out. We've got, uh, I forget, it's either 20 or 30 thousandths to bring this down to 25 millimeter. All right, we should have the uh, journals to size there. So I'm going to go ahead and clean off the oil. Go ahead and give it a check. As we try to finish them, you know, within a half to one over. So we wanted our finish size is 984. It looks like I'm 985. So we got one thousandths to bring it down. Yep, it's looking good. So we're just into the finishing phases now. Uh, we'll go ahead and get our snap ring groove machined in here. I think that was the last feature. We got a chamfer, snap ring groove, and then we'll finish it to size. We've got a 60 thousandths wide snap ring groove to machine in there, and this is where I'm going to use my Nicole Mini System grooving tool right here. I buy these, or I bought this from KBC Tools. They supply all of the inserts if you need them. They have the boring bar if you need to do an internal but this kit comes with all these different size inserts carbide inserts for doing these little narrow grooves so 
they're not marked which size they are, so I just have to kind of measure them and see uh, which one's which. So that one there is looks like around 43 thousandths. That one, I may have the one I need already in there. Let's look at, now this one looks a little bit wider. 74 thousandths wide. So let's see if it's going to be this one right here. 54. Well, I'll find which one it is. If, if I don't have the right one, then you just step it over. But these are excellent little tools for doing uh, narrow grooves like that. Looks like the 52 thousandths is the one that I have that, that'll work right there. So we'll just go ahead and remove the wide one and put the 52 thou in there. And then I'll just have to step it over 8 thousandths. The kit comes with the wrench, comes with an extra screw. And the, uh, the inserts are interchangeable for the, the boring bars as well. All right, there we go. This is a tool holder that I already had set up for this uh, shank tool. And my set, my um, I'm sorry, my height gauge that I keep set for center, so we're good to go. Just checking the uh, center height of the edge of the tool there. I'm doing just the opposite with my dial indicator. What I showed you coming from the other other way, I touched off on this shoulder here, and we're moving it back 1.425. So I've already gone one inch. One, two, three, four. And then 10, 20. Come on. There you go. There you go. 1.425 from that back shoulder. We'll set a zero just so that we know where the tool is supposed to be. And we're ready to cut. Just doing a rough ver verification that we are in the right location from the end of the shaft. It should be uh, 4.575 and just doing it like that you're on a bit of an angle so I'm not squared up perfectly but that's telling me that we're in the right spot okay let's go ahead and get this snap ring groove cut our total depth is going to be 47 thousandths on the dial so let me get her touched off here all right zero I'm gonna use some cutting oil to lube it Forty-seven, right there. We're gonna back out, and I'm gonna move the carriage over eight thousandths. And we'll go back into our depth of forty-seven. There we go. Come back across to my zero. All right, there's our snap ring groove cut. I would try to check it with my groove mics, but I just can't get all the way here and, and get lined up on the groove with the uh, groove mic. So according to the calipers, as I said before, use these for reference, but it looks like I'm right there on what we need to be, our 60 thousandths. I'm gonna go ahead and move down Check this one also. And let me see, that says 936. And our diameter, diameter is 938. Okay, so it looks like I went 2000 under the uh, dimension on the print, which is going to be just fine for that right there. I'm going to put just a touch of oil on the tool there. All right, and this, this one here, I'm gonna use my carbide. Because it's got that chrome plating on it, it'll burn up that high speed as soon as I touch it. All 
And then the uh, snap ring, we'll just hit it with the file to uh, knock off that sharp corner. All right, we're gonna go ahead and file our journals down. We've got it clean. Checking the pattern there. So this side's actually cutting a little bit better. I can see it evenly all the way across the file where this one sort of has a little bit of a low spot there in the middle of the file. All right. a little at a time so you don't undercut it. Got about a half a thousand come off of it. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it either. Looks like two tenths away so I'm going to leave that for the emery to try to clean that up. Now we're going to go ahead and Come over to our 25 millimeter journal, and we've got I've got one and a half thousandths on that one. like we are on it maybe one tenth over 984 and let's go ahead and check the uh, 7 8 diameter journal here same thing looks like maybe one tenth I don't know if you can see that or not over the 75 so just hit it again lightly Right on it. Good deal. All right, so we should be done with this one too. We are on size all the way down. So this thing is done. You can take my take my Scotch Brite. Just kind of get rid of some of that material. Double it over. Gives it just a nice little polish. Hit the corners there to soften them up a little bit. That end is ready to go. So the lathe work is finished up. We're going to go ahead and remove it from the lathe here. And we are going to go over here to the do-all mill. I'm going to set it up in the vise here. We'll have to support it on the outside area just like we did before. I've got a stand that we can use once we get it level in the vise and hold it in place. So all we've got to do is just mill a 3 16 keyway in this journal right here. And that's it. And then it'll be done. There's a, there's a drawing again so you can see the keyway that we got to mill. So let's go ahead and get that last feature finished up. All right, we're just getting the uh, steady rest taken off the mill here now. And I wanted to uh, mention that I'm real happy with the way that it worked out. It uh, held it just like I was hoping that it would. Keep this in mind if you've got some long work pieces that you need to uh, hold out, out of your lathe. It doesn't have to be mounted on a mill table. You can build a pedestal just like you would you know for a grinder and have it to where it bolts into the concrete that's how I did them before it's just this was super convenient because we had the mill table here to hold it so all right 
we're going to go ahead and keep our disassembly and get our shaft set up in the mill here. Okay, we got you in the mill and we've got our shaft set in here. I've got a jack out here on this end. And what I want to do is, is get this journal nice and level now. So I'm using the Starrett 196 back plunge indicator. It's a, it's a pretty nice indicator to be able to do this. Just bring it on down until it touches, and then we'll just find top dead center there, which is right about there. But I'm going to move it so it's a little easier for you to see right there. All right, and then we'll just run it down. We're going to run it back and forth across that journal face until we get our shaft nice and level. So come down here to the low and I'm gonna use this machinist jack to raise it up some. Now I know I'm quite a bit low there, so we're gonna come on up. And usually what I end up having to do, I'm gonna hold down on it, I'm gonna loosen the vise, drop it down in there on that parallel again. And you can see we're still low, so we've still got to come up quite a ways. Drop it down in there. All right, and just keep working it. Getting pretty close. We're within five thousandths now. Bring it back up to our zero. So now we're within two thousandths, getting close. Looks pretty darn good to me. I don't even know if that's a half a thousandths. Make just a slight adjustment on it. All right, I think that's good enough. All we're concerned about is just that width of the, the journal being square to the table. So we're good to go. We're ready to mill a keyway. Okay, we're going to find the center of the shaft using this uh, stared edge finder here. You use a DRO so you just find the, the edge of one jaw. I'm going to hit zero on the Y axis. Come across to the other jaw until I get the edge. Just right there, I'm going to hit half Y and it's going to take me right to the zero point of the, uh, the center, which is zero. So there we go. I just wanted to point out and show that I'm using this stand right here to kind of just help support the uh, weight of all this outer in and out there. And it can, you know, it can move around a little bit. It's a little flexible right there, but it's just holding all the weight hanging off of it. Our keyway size is going to be 3 16 We're going to use this Niagara two fluid end mill. So what I'm going to do with the end mill, we're already in, we know we're in the center, so we're just going to run this down. I'm going to watch it. I'm just going to touch it with the quill there, and I'm going to lock it, lock the spindle, lock the quill anyway. We're going to bring it over the table until I see a full radius being cut, a full circle. That looks like a full circle right there. I'm going to go ahead and run it out to the end. I'm going to give myself a little extra here. All right. So you got a flat milled on there now. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to fill it with my fingernail. So I can just barely feel that we are on a full radius. I'm going to come up another two thousandths. Just fill it with your fingernail. 
and you can catch an edge there if you know you're on the full radius. So you're just, you know, one or two thou under that. So now you know you got a full circle there, the full diameter of the cutter, and you want to go half the width of the key. So half of that, we're doing 316, so it's going to be 93,000. So I'm going to bring the table up 95, that way it gives me a couple thousandths extra there. So we'll come up 95, and that should be our depth to mill our key. All right, here we go. I do have my Noga Mini Cool hooked up, and I've got it regulated to where I want. I usually try to add a little bit more air on this op just to help blow the chips out of the keyway as it's cutting. So one thing I haven't done yet, I want to touch off on the end and set my zero. All right, zero and Y because I know how far over I want to go. Go ahead and get my feed rate set before I engage that way. Going. So I'm running a 1100 RPM on this particular op here. I thought the next one may be a little too fast, which is going to be 15. Get a little bit more air there just to help blow those chips out. Quite as much coolant. Just about where we need to be. I'm just watching my DRO sneaking up on our total length there. And what I want to do now is find my brush. pulling those chips out. I'm going to go ahead and run the cutter down the other way. That's it. That should be our should be our key. Now I'm going to go ahead and check it on our width and our depth and make sure we're there before I uh, move the end mill out of the way. I'm going to take this little stone here and just knock off the burrs on the top there. Just lightly rub it. That feels good. That way I can get a, uh, get a depth. Let's see if I can knock the corner off. trying to feel if there's any edge there. So we'll blow that off and then we can do our measurement. We'll just use a depth mic here. Hold it down square on the edge of the keyway. Ninety-five, ninety-six. All right, so we're at the depth of 96, which is good. You're about three thousandths over halfway of the key, so that's good right there. One thing I left I need to do is uh, check it with a gauge block, but it should be good. We, we should be right on size, but I'll show you that too. All right, I got a, a 188 stack up set of gauge blocks here. Just using those to check the width, so I know that I got a good size on that one right there, 188. So our keyway is milled on size, proper depth, so that part is done. All right, guys, we are finished up with our mud shaft. Everything worked out great. We're on size. Everything's within tolerance, and it turned out nice. Real happy with the results here. I made sure that I finished deburring the keyway properly. 
This thing is ready to go. Abby's been out here today doing one of her craft projects, so she's got the workbench kind of covered up there. Got a couple chips I need to blow out right there, but everything's good to go. So you can see our split bushing here that I made for the spider. You can see where the where the bolts kind of dug in there doing the indicating, and that's why I like to uh, make these or have some kind of shim or bushing in there uh, to keep the screws from messing up the actual shaft. Sometimes that doesn't matter, but it, uh, it makes a big difference in the quality that you do. And you can see our running bushing for the steady rest worked out really nice. Don't have a bunch of galling and scoring on there. So even if we was to uh, have just run just the shaft itself, it still would have done really good. You can see the you know, finish that it left on there. But that's a sacrificial part anyway, so we're not concerned about that. So the next phase is to get this thing, uh, I, I saved the cardboard, and I'm gonna get it wrapped up again in the cardboard uh, and put it, we'll probably strap it to a board. I'm gonna make like a little crate that it'll, that it'll sit in and we gotta ship it out. Gotta send it out to the customer. So I hope you enjoyed this project. I really enjoyed sharing it and all of the modifications that we did adapting the steady rest to the mill. And uh, really, it's just a fun project for me. I hope you enjoyed and we will see you next time on the next job. All right, see ya.